I have a bit of a correction to make, because in some past videos, as a quick and dirty way uh, to identify certain objects, I have used their display name. And in a small and limited context, especially if you only have like one level in your game, uh, that can and will work. But Unreal Engine actually has a system to assign unique IDs to actors or components or whatever you want, really. Uh, that will make sure that you don't get any duplicates or anything weird happening. Because as your game scales up, uh, that might end up being an issue. So let's take a look at that. They are called GUIDs, which stands for Global Unique Identifier. And you can see here, this uh, item pickup that I have in my game has a GUID of, it's, it's a very long string of uh, letters and, and numbers and all this like hexadecimal stuff. And this is important in my particular case, because once I have picked up this item, uh, everything in this room is one streaming level. When I leave the room and I go into this room and then I come back, it will respawn this item. And I need to be able to check whether or not this item has been picked up because if it has, it should destroy itself. So the way that we uh, deal with that is simply on uh, begin play, we check if this object uh, was triggered before, and that is just a blueprint function library function where we get the GUID, which is an interface that I'll show you in a moment. If it is valid, so GUIDs can also be checked whether or not they're valid, they have a default value of just all zeros. If it's all zeros, this is valid check will return false. So only if it is valid, so if the GUID is set, uh, will we cast to the uh, game instance that I made where I have just an array of GUIDs that have been triggered. Whether that means been picked up, uh, enemies that have been defeated, uh, or whatever. We just check, hey, does the GUID that we're checking here exist within this triggered objects array? And if it does, it destroys the actor that called this function. I just make this into a blueprint function library function so that's easy to call from wherever in the game. Related to that is when we uh, pick it up, of course, we check where or not it fits in my inventory, then it adds the item, that's all on my inventory system. Uh, and after it's uh, been added, we add it to the triggered object, which does pretty much the uh, exact opposite. It gets the GUID from the object that we called this from. We get the game instance if the GUID is valid, and then we just add it as a unique instance to the triggered object array. And the interface for get GUID is literally uh, as easy as just a return node where I return the GUID variable. So you can very easily just make this as a variable type. Uh, it's just called, uh, let's call this uh, GUID2. It's literally just called GUID. It's uh, a structure. It's one of those blue variables. And if we uh, expose this real quick, you can see that it populates automatically with a value of all zeros. So this value will be seen as invalid. If your GUID has this value and you check the isValid function on it, it will return false. In my case, uh, to ensure that anything uh, is given a good GUID uh, without me having to go through and generating them one at a time, what I do is in the construction script of these things, I check, hey, is the GUID that I have right now, that variable, is it valid? If it is valid, uh, we just move on to the rest of the construction script for this object, which is not really relevant right now. Uh, but if it is not, you can very easily set a GUID with this function called new GUID. And this will just generate a new global unique identifier. This function is very clever because it will ensure that you generate a identifier that has not been used yet in the game. So you should, in theory, never get any like overlapping uh, stuff here. And this way you can very easily identify individual things. And an actor can have multiple GUIDs. I'm just using one for the entire actor, but you can check a GUID for um, different specific functions, different specific parts, different specific components on your actor. You can really do whatever you want with it. And there is so many like slots available with GUIDs because they are effectively four integers back to back to back that the combination of IDs that exist, you're just effectively never going to get to that. So don't worry about overusing them. They're also uh, relatively lightweight uh, because, again, they are effectively just four integers uh, as far as their like size goes. 
So here in C++, if we just uh, mouse over it, we can see that their size is just 16 bytes each, so they are positively tiny. And GUIDs are actually the best way to identify unique objects within your game. So if I just like load up uh, my save game here in uh, one of my games, you can see, hey, we have an item here on the ground that I have not yet picked up. If I uh, pick it up, it deletes itself. But now its GUID is being added to the list in the game instance, which of course is persistent. So if I go back and forth now, you will see that, hey, it doesn't show up again. And there's a bunch of items that uh, work that way. So that's a quick little heads up on a global unique identifiers in Unreal Engine. It's something that I personally have skipped over a couple of times, and I want to make sure that people are aware that this is the way to do it. Don't just use display names because those can be duplicated between different actors, especially between different levels. And a very big thank you to all my Patreons. You can see them on screen right now. If you want to help support the channel or get any of the project files in any of my tutorials, there's a link down below to the Patreon page to support me or alternatively as a YouTube member. And of course, an extra massive thank you to my Cave Digger tier supporters, Sergey Thomas,